Um, as a reminder, if you have a question for Coach Eldigan or any coaches during this teleconference, please press star 1 at any time to get in the queue to ask questions. Again, that's star 1 to get in the queue to ask questions. Appalachia State finished last season 14-16 and 16 overall and 9-11 in the conference in their first season in the Sunbelt Conference. That was good for a seventh place finish and a berth in the Sunbelt Conference tournament in March. Uh, Angel Elderkin enters her second season as head coach, and they placed one student athlete on the preseason third team in Joy Jones, a junior guard. And this season, the Appalachia State Mountaineers were picked to finish eighth in the preseason poll. Uh, coach Elderkin, before we get to questions, could you please give us your thoughts on last season and a quick preview of this season? Yeah, no problem, Randy. You know, and looking back on last year, uh, being new to the conference, everything was just new. Getting hired in October, uh, the players had to, to learn from a new head coach, and then they had to learn a completely new conference. And so I think um, as we move forward into this season, we're excited about now we know, you know, it may sound funny, but we know what hotel to stay at. We know what uh, gym we're going to be in. Um, and more importantly, um, we have a better perspective on our opponents over the summer just looking at our league and going back and looking at every game and looking at 60% of Sun Belt Conference games were decided uh, by 10 points or less. And so I think um, when we break that down for our players moving into this year, you know, we've talked a lot about possessions and, and how our league is everybody's competitive night in and night out. And so as we started this year, it's been just really exciting for us. I think any time um, you can get on the court uh, with your team and, and see some growth, um, it's exciting. You know, we've, we've completed 15 practices at this point. Um, our players have really bought in um, to that process of being 1% better. You know, we talk a lot about controlling what we can control and about our effort, our communication, and our attitude. And I think um, we know ourselves, and we know we're not going to be 100% better than our competition, but if we can be that 1% better in, the, in our transition defense, our 1% better in our rebounding, and our 1% better in execution, then that's our process, and, and we're kind of sticking to that. But we know as, as a unit we're a work in progress, progress, and we're just really trying to enjoy the journey at this point. All right, thank you very much, Coach. As a reminder to our members of the media, please press star 1 to get in the queue to ask questions. Our first questions come from Steve Barrow. Steve, please go ahead. Hi, Angel. How are you doing? Good, um, Steve. <laughs> uh, I guess the obvious I think we've already talked about this, but uh, you're losing Mariah and Katie from last year. Have you been able to um, find a way to replace that offensively? Is it going to be by committee, or how does that work? I think when you when you lose two players um, like that, you aren't necessarily going to replace them um, with another player, and I think you hit it on the head. Um, what we're looking at right now in terms of our roster is a, is a committee approach, you know. So when I meet um, with our post unit, you know, I talk to them about, you know, I'm looking at, at, at this unit for 24 points a game and, you know, you know, 20 rebounds. And so they got to wrap their brain around that when I look at our point guard unit. And I keep saying unit because that's who we are. It's like Joy Jones made the team, but we've got, you know, two players right now that are playing the point, and they're going to they're gonna do it together. And so when I look at them, can you give us, you know, 12 together and, and five assists? Um, when I look at our wing players, um, can you give us, you know, when you look at the Farron Woods, when you look at Bria Carter and Maddie Story together, can you guys give us 16? And I, and I think our team is really um, bought into that. You mentioned uh, Joy. Um, what skill set does she bring to the to the table? She's a tremendous um, athlete in terms of her ability to get to the rim. Where we're trying to progress her right now as our point guard is, yes, Joy, you can break people down off the bounce, but now you have to create for others. And she has really done a great job with, with that this season in terms of getting in the paint, knowing who to pass to, knowing where the passes are, reading the defense. And so I feel like for her, she not only brings that scoring dimension um, to our team and her ability to get to the rim, but now she's starting to find her teammates. Um, so is it tempting to move her to the two so that when she drives to the basket, she can go to the basket and not worry so much about passing? You know, um, we've got some other players that are really contributing at that spot, and, and it's funny because, you know, in transition when we get it and go, you know, Joy goes to the two, and her, her not only her ability, but for her size, she can battle on the boards. 
And so we've actually looked at her as going to the glass and, and you know, and, and sending a parent back. Um, but, you know, we want to keep her right now at that point guard spot. For me, um, having somebody who understands our system enjoy in her veteran experience, it's just really important that she remains our point guard. You mentioned you had another one uh, working there. Who was that? Um, we have Jasmine Ogan Jimmy. She came to us from a junior college. Um, she's a great point guard as well. Um, she's currently learning the system. Um, she's a really now now with her dean, um, she's a great passer. So her and Joy uh, complement each other in terms of Joy is that score first, point guard, pass second. Jasmine on the other side is that uh pass first, uh score second. So it's a different flow, um with them, but she's trying to learn the system. And so right now, some of her reads on those passes, you know, she's still she's still learning. Got uh, two seniors. Uh, Farron played now and then, I guess, but Cooper was a key role last year. How do how do they um, work in your system this year? Um, Kiki, she's been doing a tremendous job. I think when anybody comes in the gym and, and, and sees Kiki, they see a tremendous amount of potential. Um, she's one of the best rebounders on our team. Um, she's buying into running the floor, and she has that 15-foot uh, jump shot. She has had um, just a great preseason, and she is bringing that to practice. So we're expecting um, big things from her. Along with her communication, she's now stepping up and, and being vocal. Um, Farron, on the other hand, if, if you watch our, our games last year, she stepped into a role late in the season when, when Katie went out with her shoulder, and she proved – um, to us that she was more than a, a scorer. She's our glue player. You know, when she's making shots for us, we're a better basketball team, but she's the type of kid that um, believes in the process, believes in the system. She runs what we need her to run. She delivers the ball where we need it, and she gets back on defense. And so um, for both of them, um, we're expecting big things, and they've both done a tremendous job in, in just leading our team. Speaking of big, you've got three players who are 6'2". And uh, they all played last year, and Bassett and Marshall also played. Are you going to um, – is that going to be a f focus for offense, I guess? You're going to try to post some teams up and hound them in the middle? Absolutely. We uh, – you know, I challenged them in, in bringing them in, and, you know, I met with them this summer, and I said they have a reason why we did not sign a post player. Um, and it's because, you know, I have that much confidence and belief in, in you know, and they joke all the time in practice that there's only three of them and um, there's only three of them, three of them. But they also know the challenges ahead. I mean, we open up with Liberty and their post player just got named preseason player of the year. They know that they're going to be tested early. And that's the way that we want it. Um, I think that Mia Marshall is going to be a, a huge surprise in our league. She is rebounding um, better than ever out of her area. We have told her six to eight points a game on the glass. Her energy um, has just she has just really worked at her game. Ashley, she's now able to, to step out and shoot the three, um, so she's going to give us the ability to, to stretch some defenses. She's working on the rebounding part of her game, but you know, in watching her play last year, she she bothers she alters shot with her ability to block, and um, and she can score the ball. She is a scorer. She can shoot it. Um, and along with with Kiki, they give us three solid posts. Now, Bria Carter. She's been she's been kind of a little bit very similar to our Mariah in terms of we can put her in the post and we can put her on the wing. And so looks for us to be doing a lot of um, mismatches with her. But she's another player that's going to be a big surprise in terms of her body of work and what she's been able to do in this off season. And uh, your last year you said you wanted to get a shot off within six seven seconds. Is, is that still the goal, or are you? Um, with these trees in the middle, you looking to slow it down a little bit? No, we're we are still working on six seconds offense, and I tell our post players all the time to run the post highway. If they're able to get down the court and beat their defense down, that's a mid mid basket. I mean, we work that action every single day, and then we also work our half court action. So, you know, our first option is to kick the ball ahead and look for something early. And what we're noticing now in practice is. Our post players have bought in, and not necessarily they're getting the ball, but they're creating open shots just by running the floor. And so I think uh, we're a little bit more seasoned, um, but we also have 
some half court executions because, like you said, we've got to be able to get the ball inside when we need a bucket. Thank you very much, Steve. We have time for one more question from the Blowing Rock News in Boone, North Carolina. Caller, if, if you'd like, you can please proceed with one question. Yeah, this is David Rogers. Um, you, you've kind of touched on it, I, I, I think, but of the, of the 14 players listed on your roster, 10 of them are listed as guards. Does that reflect, you know, more of a, a playing style or, 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 the, or the folks that are interested in, in, in that were available to you as, as recruits? I think when you look at the Sun Belt and you, know, you just look at uh, preseason honors, and I get it's preseason honors, but 10 out of the 15 players on that are, are perimeter players. I think when you, when you want to be competitive um, in this Sun Belt Conference, you've got to bring it with your guard play. And I think that was one of the things when we took a step back um, after our season and saying we need guards. We've got to get some guards in here that are able to go off the bounce, um, that are able to, to make a three-point shot. Um, so for us, that was something that we felt like we needed, and that's what we went and got. Now we have 14 players listed on the roster, and two of them are ineligible for the season, really putting us at 12. So we've kind of, we with the transfers, we've kind of got our recruiting for the next two years, per se, not just this season. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Coach Elderkin. That's all the time we have for you today. We appreciate your time.